A technique for visualizing E. coli chromosomes both confirmed semi-conservative replication and eliminated new replication riddles. So let's look at the E. coli chromosome. John Cairns in Scotland hit on the idea that if he allowed E. coli cells to grow on medium containing a radioactive nucleotide, in this case tritiated thymidine or H3 thymidine, the cells would make radioactive DNA which he could then visualize by a technique known as electron microscope autoradiography. Here's how it was done. Cells were incubated with the thymidine for several generations so that all the cells eventually contained radioactive DNA. The incubated cells were caused to lyse slowly in a dialysis bag. The slow lysis prevented damage to the DNA and lysis was done in a dialysis bag because DNA sticks to cellulose, which old-fashioned dialysis bags were made of. So after the radioactive DNA stuck to the walls of the dialysis bags, Cairns emptied the bag and cut the casing into small pieces. He placed the small pieces on an electron microscopy grid. He then poured melted film emulsion on the casing on the grids. Now film emulsion is the light or radiation sensitive stuff that coats traditional photographic film. After sufficient time for exposure, the casing with the emulsion on the electron microscope grid was developed just like real film would be developed. And the image, called an autoradiograph, could be seen in the electron microscope. This slide illustrates what Cairns saw. The black dots are grains of silver that were exposed and developed in the emulsion. There were some circular arrays of dots and some circles with attached, call them partial circles. And Cairns realized that he was looking at silver tracks exposed by the E. coli DNA lying under the emulsion. Remember that all the DNA was radioactive. Now, microbiologists had already provided evidence that the chromosome of E. coli was in fact a closed circular DNA molecule. But this was visual proof of what was until then an abstract understanding. Cairns measured the circumferences of these various circles and he found that what he would call complete circles that show up in blue or red here always measured 1.36 nanometers in circumference consistent with the length expected for a double-stranded DNA molecule containing 4 million nucleotides or 2 million nucleotide pairs or base pairs and that was consistent with a measured 0.044 picograms of DNA per E. coli cell. So it's quite clear that this is a visual manifestation of an E. coli chromosome. Cairns called these chromosomes theta images because they looked like variations of the Greek letter theta. In this slide we see his interpretation of a series of theta images as E. coli chromosomes in different stages of replication. He arranged the images to show DNA growing longer off an original circular DNA molecule, eventually separating into two circles, each of which was 1.36 nanometers in circumference, in other words, two E. coli circular chromosomes. To explain how the replication of a circular chromosome began, he postulated an origin of replication, a single point at which the double helix would begin to unwind so that each strand could be replicated by DNA polymerase. We know now that the origin of replication in E. coli is a specific short base sequence in the chromosome called ORI-C. It's the job of that sequence to recognize proteins and enzymes that participate in unwinding the DNA at the origin of replication. 